Hello again, Rebecca here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to She's Crafty, a mini paper pad class. This is week five sketch and I'm also doing day 31, the last day of the Baby Got Scraps, Scrappy YouTube and Instagram hops. So you see my sketch is a little different because I turned it trying to do something different with the sketch. Uh, this I'm going to use the Pink Paisley Page Evans Turn the Page 6x8 paper pad and this is my first layout that I'm creating with this pad. So I will have one more using this one. And those are just some of the items that I pulled in from my stash. I am also gonna use that dark cardstock in the back and white gesso. Oh, I know, but it actually doesn't turn out as horrible as all my other ones. Not saying it's great, but I'm not saying it's horrible. So I did take this one uh, cut apart sheet and I just roughly trimmed the photos down and then I realized that I trim them to be the same size as the cut apart, so I just go back in there and trim them down. And I'm gonna use those four cut aparts to mat my photos. So one whole sheet of small paper gone. Now you guys also know that the baby got scraps. We've done this for 31 days, so you know that we're allowed one 12 by 12 sheet of paper and the rest scraps or smaller pieces of paper. In the She's Crafty paper class, we are allowed to grab, We want, she asked us to grab five mini paper pads and two 12 by 12s each. So you would create 10 layouts over 10 weeks, one layout a week. So it all fell into line. I'm just gonna go ahead and mat those. And then I'm gonna come in and I use my trimmer to basically just get straight cuts. And then I take my scissors and mess that all up. So while I'm getting all this done and getting ready to start the assembly because I'm going to assemble everything first glue it together and then come in with the gesso so while I'm getting all this completed I do want to remind you again that this is the she's crafty paper play paper mini paper pad class week five so I will have all the lovely ladies listed down below in the description box that are playing along in the class and as well the very last day for the baby got scraps YouTube and Instagram inspiration hop so I will also have all those lovely ladies listed down below. I have had so much fun playing along with the Baby Got Scraps. It has been 31 days of creaty, cr creaty, <laughs> uh, words are so hard, of creating crafty goodness. And I've been able to use up so many smaller pieces of paper and scraps and embellishments and just getting layouts done. It feels so good to start 2021 with all these layouts under my belt. And to be able to use things, right? It's been a lot of fun. And I've got to meet so many new people playing in all these hops. I know that sounds like funny, but my little crafty friends are, I love you guys. And I love all you subbies too. So I'm just, like I said, going ahead and taking that straight cut and just, well, yeah. Right here, you're gonna see that I got a little too cocky. And I went and went ahead and just, you know, messed it up so I just used the other side of it save that other piece for the recycling bin because I just got rid of all my scraps I mean I do have more scraps left which for the rest of the year I will be playing along with my crafty friend MK on Saturdays she is she is going to be hosting um, a Saturday series where we're using our scraps to create layouts to, to create layouts embellishments all kinds of fun stuff basically just every all the scraps that you had left over from the previous week use up and get your saturday get your you know get it off your desk which is an awesome series so everything that you make monday through friday you'll have scraps left over right you just use those to make new layouts so i'll be playing along with her all year long on that i'm super excited because i really liked playing with my scraps i know that's so horribly wrong to admit but I just, you know, it was great. All right, so this was my idea. I was talking to my really good friend, Ronnie Sue Scrapper, about my poor white gessoing abilities. And me and her have, um, may have had many discussions on this. And we're thinking that maybe dipping your finger in water <laughs> might help smooth it out. And Ronnie, it does. Not as good as the, I, I still think that it's, I still think I'm doing something wrong. But it, 
I do kind of get it in there, but I just, I didn't want to like slab it all down and then have like one big white gessoed mess. So I, that's so why I assembled the photos and that tag that I had there so I can kind of see where it's going and what I'm covering. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to add more water and it does haze it out. See right there, it's starting to work and I'm starting to get it. So I'm like, all right, this is working. But then I'm like, there's not a lot of white there though, right? So I just, I'm going to keep working with it. And in the end, I honestly don't think it looks <laughs> as bad as the other things that I've created, right? Using white gesso. And I'm just, I'm just lightly dipping my finger in there. Now it is a thin layer and it dries super quick, like super quick. So, I mean, you got to work pretty well. Now, when I do add some water to it, it does somewhat because it's not like completely dry. So it does kind of smush it out just a little bit. And I do have this on like fast forward. So it looks like I'm going real fast, but I'm not. I was really taking my time and trying to like not leave fingerprints and smudges and that's why I start coming back in with the water. And I'm like, all right, this is working. This is working. And there you go. It's a hot mess. I know. But I'm going to cover it up. So I do pull in two of my shimmers. This is the daffodil. And the other one's, I think, an inklings or a creamies. Because it's the one that's supposed to be hard. And I think I mixed it with something else. Because there's like, there's like a darker color on my orange. So if you guys have ever seen that happen, tell me what I did wrong. Tell me if I, I mixed it or if like... I ruined it somehow. But, I mean, it turned out fine in the end. I don't know if it was the glitter that separate. I don't know. I'm so new to the shimmers, I don't know. So, if you use shimmers and you have used them a lot, when I open up this next pot, let me know what I did. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get the yellow on there. Splatter it around. And I do just, you know, I just get it on there with my... Um, paintbrush spray some water and then like let it run because I really like that effect and I was really trying to cover up the white like that's the whole point of it right so I'm like looking at it I'm like all right I'm digging this it's starting to like not look horrible when I cover it up this one right here see and I don't know see how it's kind of brown right there or like black but as soon as I mix it it's it's fine it's one of those ones that's hard and you got to let some water sit out. So I don't know if it's the glitter that's set, like the shimmery part, the glitter that's separated from it. I'm not sure. But like I said, it went on fine and dried fine. Um, I'm not sure what color this is. It's probably some kind of, I think it's got cantaloupe in the name. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I am going to spray that and then I'm going to get my pen and just get it all fun mixed together. And I'm going to let it run. And just kind of smear it all around. Oh, that's so much fun. I love doing that. That's like my favorite technique right now. And it is a thicker weight cardstock that I'm using here. So that little piece that came that ran off the side, I am able to sop him up. Uh, and I'm going to just dip, I just dip my, keep dipping my brush into the paint that's on there. And, uh. move it around. Now I do dry it just a little bit, but I don't, I lost my train of thought. Somebody sent me a text. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there it's, you see how shimmery it is, but I wanted more color. I wanted you to be able to see the yellow and the orange more. So even though it's like shimmery goodness, I needed more color. So I go ahead and take my, um, I believe that's the Vicky Booten watercolor pen in yellow. And I just put it on my block and squish it down. I'm going to do some yellow down there. And we're going to do that again up here. And I'm not really trying to go over where I did the orange because I'm going to put some orange over that. So I'm going to wipe my block off. Uh, and when I use my heat gun, I don't dry it till it's dry. I only put it on there to like get it drying just to hurry up the process. But I don't want to burn the paper or the mixed media. I don't, I don't want to bake it. Just a little trick there. You have to be patient when it comes to mixed media. I have learned the hard way. You have to wait for them to dry. So I am taking my Shimmers pin in the Sundance and the Lemonade. And I'm getting some more. These are the Close to My Heart Shimmer brushes. And those suckers are shimmery. I mean, whew. Then I'm going to come in with my Distress Art Crayon because I never, I don't use that enough. Just like my Gelatos. So I don't use them enough. So, And I'm just adding some more bold, non-shimmery color in there. And I could, I guess I could have grabbed my orange as well. But I didn't really think about it. Interesting, Rebecca. Could have got some more orange in there. So when I get this all done, I'm just using my finger and the, 
the water there. When I get this all done, I will put it to the side and let it dry. And when it when I cut back, it's going to be so pretty. But see, had I not used the white gesso, you would have never been able to see yellow or orange. You would have never been able to see those colors because it's a darker background. So the, the white gesso did help. Learning curve, right? Learning curve. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, this is where I come in with the Sundance, the orange. This is like a, no, this is peach because I wanted more orange. I already used the Sundance. And then I grab my, um, I have no idea what color that was. I believe it's an, I have, it was another orange and then my orange uh, watercolor pen. I was really working it for this one. Oh, there's my shimmers brush. All right. I'm going to mix this together. And I'm going to do splats all over it. I That was just like my thing. I just took all those colors and mixed them together. And then I was like, I'll never get this color right again. So I'm just going to splat all over the page. And then because I had such a nice amount left on my block, I do reach down and grab just my little, my little, yep, that's all I do. Splat it on there and move on with my life. So I'll use that for a background or something in my art journal book some other time. All right, so now I'm going to futz with this and see if I like to switch it any other way. And I'm going to keep turning it until I'm, I, that is not the way it was originally, but that's the way I end up liking it, right? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm loving this. I did, while it was drying, I did just go ahead and journal on that tag as well. And it's just, this is uh, my fiance and his daughter uh, after she ran in the state track meet in November of 2020. And I did put some dry adhesive on that and then I'm going to go ahead and get some wet adhesive down. And we're going to go ahead and get that placed down. And I'm going to flip it over and make sure that it is fully adhered. And I use the wet adhesive because of the gesso and the mixed media and all the other crazy goodness that's on there. Now I am coming in with some of the circles that I punched out for a previous layout. Right? And I'm just using those up. So I'm going to go ahead and place, a five, I believe, five of these on the page. Well, it's going to be four, but I cut one in half. If that makes any sense, right? So I just tuck them in and around the page. I use liquid glue. And I'm going to stick this one over here in no man's land. Because I felt like it needed something on that edge, right? And then we're going to come in. And I'm going to grab some bows. And I'm going to use these two little um, uh, burlap bows and then I'm going to use some rub-ons that are from the Paige Evans collection as well. I don't know if it's from Turn the Page. It could be from something else. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm just going to get those on the page because that is the last bit of rub-ons that I believe I have in my stash and I'm trying to use those up. So I'm just going to sprinkle those around the page as well. And I do go ahead and put a nice amount on this bow and I'm going to hold that in place for just a minute to let it grab. And then since I only had two of the burlap bows, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna use this rub on yellow bow here. So now I have three bows on the layout, right? And we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look at the rest of these little guys and I'm just going to cut out all the ones that I think will go and I'm going to I just use my bone folder there it's a stamp it's an old stampin up one as you can tell it's been well loved over the years the logo is almost completely removed and I just keep looking to see if there's anything else that will go and there is not so I'm going to go ahead and put those back into that yep that is the last bit of rub ons that I have guys so I'm kind of excited about that I really wanted to use that you got this, but I couldn't find a place for it. I'm going to go ahead and stick down the little rainbow. It's got some kind of inspirational quote on it. And I'm going to hold that in place for just a smidge as well, too. Because you know that the page is slightly warped. So I want to make sure that everything stays down. Now I do have these two stickers left that I used on a previous layout as well. And I'm going to go ahead and get that sheet used up. So I'm telling you what, January 2021 has been the year, has been the month, the year, 
Huh, sometimes it feels like a year. Has been the month of like using so many things up. I feel so accomplished. And the day that I'm doing the voiceover, which is today right now, I did I put all my December oh, all my October, November and December layouts away. I put them in page protectors and put them with the albums. Now I do have a large album project that I have to do to where I do have them broke down finally by years, but they're not like in order, if that makes any sense. And I do need to split some of the years up because I've scrapped a lot of older pictures over the past several months. So I have quite a lot of layouts that need to go into the albums. And I think I'm going to have to bust up some years. Um, it's really funny. <laughs> like I have some that are like three, four and five years all together. And then like I have 2020 which like 2017, 2018, 2019, and now 2020, they all have like four or five albums to their self. Like how that's, that's really when I got back into scrapbooking guys, like to be honest with you. All right, this layout is quickly coming to an end. So I do want to remind you once again to please do not forget when you get done watching the video to go down below and check out all the wonderful videos and all the inspiration you can get from all my scrappy friends who have so kindly let me play along with them on all of these fun little hops. I am also going to go ahead and outline because I felt like it needed just a little bit more gold, right? So I just grabbed my G2 gold gel pen and I'm just going to very, very messy draw lines around the page. I do put a couple X's in there to look like faux stitching when I'm done. But yeah, this has been so much fun and I wanna thank everybody who played along with the Baby Got Scraps and who let me play along. You guys have inspired me so much and I really do enjoy watching all your videos. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.